So hello and welcome to random factlet number five from veterinary ECC small talk with me Shailen Jasani. So today I'd like to talk to you about brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome or BOAS. Um, I think some people call it brachycephalic airway obstruction syndrome but that doesn't reduce very well to an acronym and ultimately I think it doesn't really matter what we call it as long as we're all talking about the same thing. So as you know, in these dogs of brachycephalic breeds, essentially the problem is anatomical abnormalities that result in an increase in upper airway resistance. And the two predominant primary abnormalities that we're talking about are an elongated soft palate, so therefore the soft palate sort of obstructs the laryngeal area, and stenotic or narrowed nares. As a result of this increase in upper airway resistance, the dog will breathe with increased inspiratory effort, and the consequence of this is an increase in uh, negative pressure during inspiration. This has consequences predominantly on soft tissues, and the main one that we're concerned about is it causes eversion of the laryngeal saccules. But it can also contribute to causing laryngeal collapse as well, and I'm not going to talk about laryngeal collapse in detail in this presentation, um, but we'll probably do another one on that at some point in the future. And then the other thing that is commonly found in these dogs that are affected by BOAS is a hypoplastic trachea. Um, and again, that is something that um, you know, I'm not going to go into detail in this presentation, but we will mention it briefly at the end. So just by way of a quick reminder, as you know, these dogs breathe with that kind of familiar, noisy, stertorous or snoring type of sound. And they basically can suffer from upper respiratory tract dyspnea, which is typically inspiratory in nature at least. But some of these cases can also have an expiratory component, which means that the dyspnea takes on a kind of mixed pattern. It won't be a surprise to you, but just as a reminder, we know that these dogs, um, their condition can be exacerbated, for example, by exercise. And obviously that ends up being a bit of a catch-22 vicious circle type of situation because, because they don't cope very well with exercising, they don't get much exercise. That might mean that they become overweight, which means that they become even more vulnerable to the BOAS problem. So they end up in this kind of vicious circle that's hard to break. Um, but also in hot weather as well, or if they get hypothermic from exercising, etc, etc. And these dogs can develop cyanosis, they can present collapse, and as you know, um, unfortunately this condition is one that is potentially fatal. Again, by way of a quick reminder, in terms of what are the steps that we often consider when we're looking at the initial therapy of a dog that's having a BOAS crisis, um, oxygen supplementation, judicious sedation, establishing intravenous access, cooling the patient appropriately, making sure that you subject them to minimal stress and intervention. In some cases, we administer a corticosteroid quite early on. Um, my own personal experience is that most of these patients that present having an acute respiratory crisis can be stabilized pretty well with um, non-surgical intervention in the first instance. And certainly from my experience, the need to do an emergency tracheostomy is a pretty rare event. But ultimately, we're not going to resolve the issue for these dogs with this conservative management. And they do need to have some kind of surgical intervention to try and improve the anatomical structure of their airway. So this picture is taken from the acvs.org website. It's showing you a patient that has an elongated soft palate that's extending into the larynx. And the treatment for this is a staphylectomy, so basically resection of part of the soft palate to try and remove it away from obstructing the larynx. This picture is um, kindly contributed by Dr. Roy Kramer. It's basically showing you stenotic nares before and after. And the treatment for this condition essentially is resection of a wedge of tissue in order to widen the nares and you can see on the left there that the nares is um, you know much much more narrow than the one on the right after surgical intervention. And this picture here is showing you some averted laryngeal saccules 
and the treatment for this part of the problem is to try and grasp the saccule soft tissue and to try and excise them in order to increase the diameter of the airway and minimize the obstruction. And lastly, this radiograph is of a bulldog um, showing you a hypoplastic trachea. Now, in some of these cases, if we're talking about juvenile animals, so puppies, um, as they get older and they grow some more, um, the contribution or the seriousness of this problem can become reduced and some dogs will be able to tolerate having a relatively hypoplastic trachea much better once they're older and fully grown adult animals. But of course, if there's an adult animal that has a clinically significant hypoplastic trachea, then you've got a bit of an issue. And I'm not aware of any um, you know, reliable treatment method for this problem. And if any of you listening to this know more about that than me, then do certainly please feel free to get in touch and, and let me know. Okay, so I hope that you found this brief overview of BOAS useful. As always, do feel free to get in touch and let me know comments, questions, queries, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can also follow Veterinary ECC Small Talks blog, our growing Facebook community, and there'll soon be some learning material available online. And you can join our mailing list for infrequent, but I hope useful updates. Until next time then, take care. Bye-bye.